Good morning to everybody. My name is Barbara Galli from Politecnico di Milano and I was working with Professor Manuel Vaquero Pinero from University of Perugia. The title of our research is A Shared Heritage, the Grain Silos Between the Countryside and the City. The purpose of research is to trace the evolution of primary elevators, also known as country elevators or silos. They are structures used for the storage of grain and other raw materials distributed across American states and Canada. These structures are fundamental in structuring the internal circuits of grain commerce. With their vertical profile and colored walls, they stand out like bell towers in the vastness of wheat plains, becoming the sentinels of the prairie. In particular, elevators characterize the Great Lakes region of North America between Canada and the United States an area that underwent economic transformation in the second half of the 19th century, making it one of the most important zones for the production and commercialization of grain. This development led to the need to manage and store large quantity of perishable goods and the introduction of a new type of building, the silos, or elevators. These differ from traditional warehouse not only in the quantity of goods stored, but also in the systematic use of mechanized structure that allow for a faster and easier management of products stored in sacks or bulk. For uh, these reasons, these buildings have caught the attention of many researchers. In the first phases of expansion, silos were made of wood and their technical systems were powered by steam. The risk of fire was very high and the structure deteriorated rapidly. It's estimated that the average lifespan of the first generation of rural elevators was between 15 and 20 years. In response to the growth of international trade, which required large structure with elements capable of withstanding the pressure generated by storing tons of grain, Experiments with other materials such as brick began, leading to the introduction of concrete at the beginning of the 20th century. In the most cases, this was a spontaneous architecture created by individual farmers, as Britt recount in his novel, An America That Was. He wrote, the farms were built without the help of an architect or reference to a particular style or period. In his description of the family farm, Britt informed us that the silos, autos, individual structures are an integral part of a complex production process, and in general a careful planned network for the collection and distribution of grain. The transformation process, however, linked to the continuous demand for products, which affect both materials and the composition of spaces at an architectural level seems to have greatly influenced the modern movement architects, who adopted this typology as a symbol of modernity. Le Corbusier in Person Architecture defined silos as the first signs of the new era. For Gropius and Mendelssohn, they are an example of how form directly follows function. But they are also important for urban planning and the construction of relationship between urban and rural spaces. These architectures born out of economic necessity see the architectural revolution closely connected to economic and social history. Often, in fact, it was the railway companies that promoted the construction of elevators, playing an indispensable role in the union between farmers needing financial support and port facility designed to accommodate the grain laden rail cars. In this commercial scheme, and to reduce costs by accelerating the loading operation of ships, Bagged grain was replaced by bulk grain, which was easier and more convenient to adore. From this perspective, it's evident how the grain cycle, especially in the United States but also in other sporting countries, has influenced the architectural development of storage building and the urban planning of cities. In the second half of the 19th century, the symbiosis between railway lines and the vertical construction of grain warehouse contributed to urbanizing the countryside of the North American region. The architectural distances between urban and rural areas were reduced with the replacement of the first wooden elevators with those of the second generation, made with fire-resistant materials capable of ensuring better grain preservation. Horizontal warehouses, uh, flat houses, disappear with the, the railways replaced the bagged grain with the bulk cereals. Farmers receive 
loans and technical advice for the construction of mechanized silos along the railway lines. The significant role of railway companies in the development of green cities demonstrated by the 1898 bill proposed by Nathan Kingsley, Railroad Commissioner of Minnesota, to regulate the relationships between elevators, builders, and railway companies. Without the railway's contribution guaranteeing the grain supply would have been impossible, requiring faster and more competitively priced transports. The grain had to arrive without delay at the storage facilities to be loaded onto waiting ships. Transport organization required functional planning of connections between ports and farm. Naturally, in this situation, conflicts and tensions between the farming communities and railway lines were not uncommon. A very eloquent case concerned Enid in the state of Oklahoma. Only after acts of sabotage and strong fiscal pressures did the population succeed in making Enid a railway stop for grain loading. The result of this decision was the construction of 24 imposing grain elevators, defined as there may not be a more imposing city in rural America. Of nearly half of the facilities have become empty shelves. The distribution of elevators demonstrated their close relationship with the railway lines influencing the shape of the city. To understand their importance, it's sufficient to say that by the early 1920s, there were 9,400 in the United States with a clear concentration in three states, North Dakota, Minnesota, and Illinois. The average capacity of sales and elevators was 25,867 bushels. In Canada, in 1920, there were 4,057, mainly in the provinces of Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Manitoba, most built after 1900. Authorities state that the very low number of rural elevators from early phases correspond to the easy deterioration of structures, subject to abandonment, destruction, and constant change. Indeed, regarding construction materials, in addition to aforementioned predominance of wooden buildings, there is a small percentage of brick or metal clad buildings, with the use of concrete appearing only from 1905 and reaching a percentage of only 6% in 1920. To improve the efficiencies of the centralized chain and after an initial phase of pioneering work, there is a gradual standardization of system. This is a requirement imposed by railway companies like the Canadian Pacific Railway, which in many cases not only holds the license for the construction of uh, rural silos near the railway, but also participates in the construction process by providing a standard model of a grain elevator suitable for transferring goods to rail cars. In this complex territorial planning, a decisive role is attributed to the terminals of the grain distribution process, port silos, that stand on the horizon influencing and modifying the appearance of and organization of urban spaces. Among these, the elevators built in the Buffalo stand out considered an icon of this typology. The port transformed into the city's beating heart, and from the mid-19th century, the railway connection to the Atlantic coast was added to the river link. Buffalo became a vital large railway center. Between 1897 and 1946, 26 grand elevators were built with a total storage capacity of 56,127,000 bushels, equivalent to more than 15 million tons. These concrete grain elevators represented the combination of 50 years of development in elevator design. The increase in international grain demand and the simultaneous construction of mega silos contribute to the urbanization of city area near to waterways used as a major communication routes. The waters of the Great Lake Regions River in North America reflected the rapid transformation of cities driven by the grain trade. In cities like Chicago overlooking the vast Lake Michigan, the local press celebrated with satisfaction the eye of the grain silos, which could compete in volume and majesty with the downtown skyscrapers. In this city, where the impact of the multiplication of elevators on urban space configuration is most evident, there was an increase in the railway network and the construction of port facilities suitable for docking large and steel ships. 
currently, the pressing need to facilitate storage operations promoted to electrification of mechanical systems. According to the press, electric motors, besides reducing costs, add the advantage of decreasing the risk of fire. Therefore, elevator-owning company committed to constructing a steam or hydroelectric power plant from the early 20th century to enable more intensive use of mechanized elevator systems, which could store larger quantity of goods, simulating the construction of increasingly larger building by adopting new design solutions using new materials, such as reinforced concrete. This system didn't affect only USA and Canada, in fact, the large quantity of grain arriving in Europe and also in Latin America countries influenced and imposed a new organization of urban spaces in these countries, with sailors and elevators becoming the most visible part of this transformation. Examples of such transformation include uh, Hamburg, Manchester, Buenos Aires, and other cities. This seemingly unplanned structure emerging and evolving according to production needs have established themselves throughout Europe and Latin America, rising with increasing certainty, creating and shaping the landscape. We can see here the development of uh, Manchester uh, port uh, in uh, what it was in 1929 and the uh, increasing of structure in 1948. The importance of these structures, uh, which characterize the American landscape and partly the European one, remain alive. Their historical relevance is very current in today's America, where futuristic skyscrapers dominate the skyline of major cities. The America First program represents the counterpart. It's a political action started by the Trump administration and continued and expanded by the Biden presidency, aiming at the defined relationship between the federal agencies and the rural communities with the objective of intervening in the infrastructure system to improve the network of connections and boost the economy of agricultural areas. Attention to rural areas provides social, political and economic standpoints to recovery and the reuse of these buildings as a solution to the crisis of identity and the population of rural areas. In the last years, silos and the grain elevators have undergone repurposing, no longer serving query agricultural purpose. They are being converted into museums, community centers and residential spaces, adapting to new needs while preserving historical significance. In the slide, you can see some adaptive reuse of this building as, for example, houses or museum or civil center, or, for example, also hotel, as in the case of uh, the, mm, the building in Cape Town. But also like theater and the Mill City Museum, um, a project made by uh, John Nouvelle in uh, Minneapolis, but also as a residential uh, space, as a prosilo, a structure that was uh, realized in Copenhagen. The role of grain elevator and the silos extended uh, behind their functional purpose. They have influenced architectural styles, urban planning, and socioeconomic structures. Their evolution for simple wooden structure to complex concrete building marks significant technological advancement and changes in trade practice. They remain symbols of economic uh, development, technological progress, and the cultural heritage, continuing to impact the landscapes and the communities. The study of their history offers insight into the broader pattern of industrialization and urbanization, providing valuable lessons for future development in rural and urban planning. Gracias, grazie, thank you for the attention.